don't have a speaker lined up for the next meeting, so if you have a topic you want to talk about, uh, be sure to come talk to me after the meeting and we can get something set up. Okay. That's all I need. Hello, everybody.
think in terms of the components of your game, your characters, and your, your UI, and the environment, uh, those are, I don't know, I guess the UI does change even though they're all in the architecture. Okay. Mechanical tools is a tiny bit of historically relevant fine art. Uh, stand on the shoulders of uh, giants, you know, so that uh, uh, the small, wobbly ones don't get taken out of there. Um, so, now I'm going to go over tall structures. This is like one of the biggest issues I've seen with a lot of games. And a lot of games I've, I've liked in spite of uh, current problems. So, the human brain, the visual system, processes everything at a great scale long before it goes into Visually, we don't want to think when we're appreciating a movie or something. So we try to think in terms of making everything be either a light thing over a dark thing or a dark thing over a light thing. Um, it, really, it really makes things work better. Um, so all the Grand Master Painters did it, and the best game developers do it too. Obviously, that's just some editorializing. I'm sure there are some great game developers with great visuals. Um, so you're going to bring visual rules to make sure the audience knows that you know.
Thank you. 
snow is a great example because snow is for the most part white. So you've got a yellow light on your snow and blue shadows, and it's super obvious to most folks. And it's harder to find examples of cool light with an orange shadow because that's not the most common light setting. But I found an advertisement there that said the shop was a cool light. I don't know if you can tell on the monitor there's a bunch of uh, cyan and then a pretty desaturated red going on there in the shadows. Um, and I sampled those colors just to make sure. And uh, I found a stunning conclusion in my slideshow. Google search um, 
<laughs> I think I have that. this 
Magazine, Vanilla Action Strip, and then eventually I moved on to a technology called, or a uh, game API called uh, Blitzel. It's an Action Strip uh, engine again, and uh, and I, uh, I I really like it. Kickstarter. 
Kickstarter for a Ninja exclusive game, and you raise fifty thousand dollars, at least they'll they'll match it dollar for dollar you know, if you're both Ninja exclusive for six months. And so we're going to try to get get as much of this done as we can, probably in the next month or so, and then start working on our next project because you know, we really like the Ninja, and uh, it's a lot of fun. If you guys if you guys have heard of it, you guys want to check it out. You know, there's a great game called Powerful. It's the best game ever for it. It's a Face off four archers and you just kill each other. And uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of cheeky, but it's a couch game. And so so we're, we're going to be working on something that's couch multiplayer like that. Uh, because honestly, it needs more of those games. Uh, but, you know, that, that will come in time. But this is what I'm working on. And uh, if, you know, if you have any questions about it, then let me know. So it looks like, uh, is there like strategy involved in that game? In terms of which tiles can attack in which direction? Yeah, yeah as you can see, like you know, right here, this token can have an arrow here, here, and here of the portal. Uh, so that means he can attack in four different directions. So if he's, if uh, you know, if, if I were to place this token last, I could have attacked this one and this one at the same time. So like the first token you place is really probably not optimal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. So it, it, it all depends. Like, you know, see, this one this one was my first token that I played. It has a higher defense than it does in the hat. And so placing it right here, where the only two arrows were facing away from, from the other the other uh, you know, the other spaces, means that any token that was placed next to it would have had to attack its defense. So if and it's and attacked to attack, it goes up attack and not the defense. Yeah. yeah. So like uh, you know, these two right here, because they have the arrows facing each other, they they're this one's attacked to its uh, went up against this one. So, and uh, there's not any of uh, the, these tokens in play, but we're also working on an elemental uh, you know, system where certain certain tokens will be uh, have a fire, wind, water, or earth ability, and, and it's basic you know basic elemental. You know, uh, fire beats wind, wind beats earth, earth beats water, and water beats fire, and it just adds different adds more strength. And so that's what we're working on. And we're going to be working on other other aspects too, like you know blocks. If you look at uh, let's go back to the adventure map here. Uh, you look at Petra Master. You know this one uh, blocks off entire spaces. Um, since we have just ten spaces and six tokens for each player, we're not going to be blocking off spaces. What, we, what we're planning on doing is uh, so we're actually going to be working on uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have walls put in place. So like if there was a wall right here, these two to these two spaces wouldn't be able to affect each other. You know, so we're going to be able to you know, add variety and that, and that kind of thing too. Make, you know, make battles uh, more interesting. Um, this is the earlier build before I added the cool board that I put in there right there. But yeah, so there we go. Yeah, that's a good story about the uh, We have, and it's certainly extended, uh, we have a fully inflated now. Um, most of the rules that we're getting are based on Tetra Master. I'm working on exactly how Tetra Master is going to be inflated, and as well as modifying rules, removing some, adding a little bit here and there. So, um, you know, that's something I'm going to. I've played it out in my head, <laughs> so I just, uh, I just haven't gotten around to actually sitting down on paper and you know, putting it out into paper form. Um, what, what I'm doing, what, what our plan is, is that uh, we'll be able to play other people online. Um, you know, trade tokens? Huh? Trade tokens, maybe? Yeah, you'll be able to trade tokens. Um, you know, if, if, when you battle somebody, you know, you're going to, when you win, if you win, you get to take one of their tokens. Right. You know, um, that, that they that you capture during the play. Um, so how are you going to track what tokens the players have? What's the system for? What we are going to have 
this is all going to be online, so we're going to have a, a database back in for it that keeps track of you know, players' ranks, you know, what, what they have, what, what they may own, um, you know, and, and so things will, will be able to be tracked that way. Um, but right now, I'm just working on getting the actual game plan, right. and then once that's all figured out, once I got some data in my hands, then I'm going to start implementing that stuff. And, so eventually, you know, I wouldn't mind bringing this game to iPad and Android tablets. So that they, you, know, you can you can play each other over the Wi-Fi connection or something. You know, where you're sitting down with somebody and you're playing it together. Yes, Hanks is uh, based on him.
No sound in space, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is using the uh, the howler. Yeah, the server. There's no connect limit. Um, you know, there's no scoring system implemented or anything like that. Uh, there you go. You can die if you smash into the wall. Uh, there's no collision. So the server has no limit, it's not keeping score, so you know, that wouldn't be very difficult to implement, that's all. Getting client-side predictions, and of this is completely server authoritative, you know, like, has, any, has anyone done like multiplayer programming or anything like that, or stuff like this? You, <coughs> if you're implementing something like this, you want the server to have final authority on collisions. So the server is actually running the game along with you. The client, the client isn't even really running the game. I mean, it's just presenting graphics to you. But it is doing some, um, some integration for time steps and things like that. Um, this is redplaygames.com, all one word. No. And uh, the port is 8080, because it's a Node.js port. But uh, yeah. No, I'm just okay. trying to later on tonight. Yeah, well, uh, you know, go get a friend. <laughs> it's a server in California. If you hit D, you can get some uh, data. That's like ping. You know, and uh, let's see. Control and shift J will give you some output data, too. What are you using for uh, the communication? It's Node.js, but I'm using Socket IO. Socket IO. Oh, 
also wanted to make an announcement about, uh, have any of you heard of a uh, new game conference that's going to be starting out next spring? It's called Super BitCon. Um, it's, it's, I think, March 29th, so it's still a ways off. Uh, we're going to be doing a panel there, and uh, I know there's going to be some other cool panels and uh, a bunch of uh, game-related stuff exhibiting there. Uh, so that's going to be over at the fairgrounds, and if you're interested in that, you should check out their website. I think it's superbitcon.com. Um, so it, it's just sort of a general video game conference. So um, Oh, it's, it's not until March. March Yeah, it's going to be over at the fairgrounds. Yeah, Is this a game conference or just a tech conference? Uh, it's focused on gaming. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, sort of an exciting thing for uh, game community around here. Um, but yeah, if, if no one else has anything, I think that's uh, pretty much wraps it up. You can feel free to stick around. There might be a little pizza left. I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, thanks.